Hi, in this quick tutorial, I'll show you how you can use Affinity Designer and bring in a sketch that you've designed, especially when you want to use it to create your fashion drawings. So let's go ahead and see how we can create this technical drawing using Affinity Designer and just using our mouse. I'm not using a Wacom tablet, I'm just using my mouse. So let's jump in and I'll show you how to do that. Hi and welcome back. So the first thing we'll do is to bring in our sketches. So I'll open up Affinity Designer and just wait for a few seconds for it to load. And once it loads, I'm going to go to the folder where I have stored my sketches and bring in that sketch file. So but before we can do that, let's create a new project and then place an image. So I'm just going to go to File, click on New, and right here I'll just decide on a standard size. Now since this is going to be a uh, standing model, with two sides, I'll just switch to A4. Now these are custom templates, but you can always go to print and I'll click on A4 and I'll make sure the orientation is on the vertical, not the landscape. So that's the portrait orientation and I'll leave everything as it and just click on create. So now that that's done, you can actually see this interface. So let me just go ahead and quickly reset my interface in case it doesn't look like yours. So you're not confused where things are. So to do that, I'm going to go to view I'm going to go to studio and here at the bottom i'll click on reset studio and this should be the default studio settings i usually like the layers on the left so i'll just click on the layers and just drag that and then share that window with the appearance and assets i'm not going to be using assets and appearance so what i'll do to get rid of this is go to win uh, window go to studio and then click on assets to deselect that and for appearance i'll still go to window Go to studio and click on appearance now i don't have that window shared as well so that's how we can quickly customize the window so for a background i like to have a little nice cool background for this so i'll click on the rectangle tool and i'll just drag in left click and just drag a rectangle around this edge to select this also i like using the color wheel so what I'll do is to click here on this menu icon and click on wheel so we can see the color wheel. Now with this, I can just set this to a cool tone and just desaturate that and drag this a little bit. If you want to see the hex, hex value I'm using, I'll switch this over to the sliders. And here where it says HSL, I'll just switch that to RGB hex. Just go ahead and get rid of this Facebook icon. So I'll just get rid of the RGB hex over here so you can actually see what we are working with. So I have my RGB hex selected and I just have this, uh, let's go ahead and close this. I'll just get rid of my internet because it's uh, kind of like getting in the way. So I'll just deselect this and I don't have any Wi-Fi uh, connections right here. So cool. So the next thing we'll do is to just import our reference image or our drawing. So first I'll lock this because I don't want to accidentally create any drawing here and I'll double click on this and I'll call this the background. So next let's place our image. Placing our image, we can use the place image tool by clicking on this. It's going to ask us where we want to get our image from. So I'll scroll over to where I downloaded, uh, downloaded this asset. So it's on this PC, on my new volume D, on my 3D fashion design folder. I believe I have a sketches folder and then this is the eight head model and I'll click open. And if I click on place, this will actually place our model right here on the screen and we can see our model. If we click on the navigator, you can just drag this and float this anywhere you want. I'll just float it this section. You can easily zoom in and out and check out each section you're working with. And that's basically what the navigator does. So if you want to resize the window, you can always click on this depending on the system you're using. But for now, I'm just going to float the navigator so I have a little bit of space to work with. So now we have this layer of our eight head model on top. What we want to do is to just dial down the opacity a little bit till it becomes slightly visible because we want to start tracing this image. To begin tracing, all we need to do is to click on the shape tools like the pen tool, but right now what I want to do is to click on the ellipse tool and just try to uh, hold control and zoom in on the head. And I'll just try to create a nice ellipse for this head like so. I don't need the fill, I just need the stroke. So for the fill, I'll click on the fill and click on this cir white circle with the red white horizontal line has been slashed and that's going to get rid of the fill. For the stroke, I'll click on it and I'll set the weight, the width to one point five like so so we're using a 1.5 line width i believe that's kind of much so i'll just dial that down to say 0.8 i believe i 0.8 is super fine i like 0 
So now with this selected, what we are going to do is to model half of this design and then flip or, you know, kind of like flip the other half because this is a human model, this is symmetrical. So what we can also do is to add guides. So right now we can't see our ruler. So I'm going to go to view and I'll just click on show rulers. Okay, we have our rulers on. Click on show rulers and we'll begin to drag in these guides. Now this model is eight heads tall, so I'll drag one for the head and just keep placing these. This is for the bust line, like so. I'll just set that back and just zoom in and drag one for the bust line. And let's drag another guide for the waistline. So I'll go over here at the top. Sorry, I'll maximize that. We'll just put that back in. So let's drag another guide for the waistline. Another guide for the hip line. Right here. Another guide for the thigh line. Another one for the uh, knee line, that's the knee, character's knee line, another guide for the calf, another guide for the ankle, so we'll just place them here, and then another guide for the floor, so this is going to be our floor line, and we'll just place this here, it doesn't really matter, we'll just place that there. So now with our guide selected, what I'm going to do is to click on the pen tool, so I'll click on the pen tool here, and uh, before we do that, let's set a vertical guide, that will guide us on how we are going to kind of like set this. Now, because the drawing is a little bit uh, off center, so we can actually see what's happening there. So I'll just go ahead and turn off snapping for now. So I'll disable snapping so I can be able to place this line basically anywhere I want. So I just want it to be right here at the center since this is slightly off center sketch. So next, let's go ahead and click on the pen tool and we can start drawing out these uh, sections. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to turn back the snapping so we can easily snap points to the grid. And I'll just start with this section of the neck. So the idea is to, uh, I can hold shift. The idea is to create very hard polygonal edges, first of all. So I'll just undo that and just drag one right here. And let's keep going along the model, like so. And this is going to be for the hands. I'll just click one here, one here, and I'll just keep going around the model, like so. And the idea is to go around or just to use the first part of this design. So I'll just click on this, click on this point, this point, now the thing with working with vectors is you want to create as few points as possible. This point here, I'll add a sharp point for the ankle line and I'll get back here, here, here as well. And let's get back to the top so we can close this shape. Now if I click on this, let's just undo that. If I go back to the uh, move tool, you can actually see we have a full shape right here. And what we can do is to select the shape and move it around. So basically we have half of this shape right here. So what I want to do is to quickly create this other half separately, or what we can do is to just duplicate this. So I'll do control J to duplicate that. And I'll select the one at the bottom and over here at the top, we'll flip this horizontally and I'll hold shift using the move tool and I'll just drag to drag this to the center, basically something like that. So now you can see we have a symmetrical pattern or design that we can use to start working on our model. But then again, if we look at this, we can see that this edge here has some shapes. So let's go back to the node tool. And what we can do is to begin to join these two shapes together into one shape. So I'll hold the control, click on this, and what I can do is to, uh, we can just right click. And if we want, we can merge this shape together, but hopefully you get the idea. So, uh, so that's just going to be a quick tutorial on how you can create the path to represent your model. So what we can do right now is to get rid of the background image layer. 
create another uh, layer. So let's go ahead and zoom out using the mouse wheel. I'll create another layer on top of this one. I'll put it right here and I'll use the fill, set it to a nice cool tone. And right here, let's bring back the color wheel and let's select a nice cool tone. And you can actually see you have your model design like that. So for each of these curves, what I can do is to click on the curve and click on the hold on shift and click and press control G just to group everything. And I'll call it, uh, I'll call the shape. So once I have this shape, what I can do is now, what I can do is just reduce the opacity of the shape and we can do things like add a fill. So we have a fill to this basic shape we've created like so. And what we can do right above this shape is to use the pen tool and start creating designs for a fabric. So let's go ahead and click the pen tool and go ahead and lock this shape. And let's see if we can just do some basic fabric. So I'll click here and click this point. And what I want to do is to, let's say I have a fabric that goes here to this side. I'll just click over here, this side, click here, and I'll click over here. And what I can do is just click on this line and I'll set the fill to any color I want. Let's say this is the purple fabric and I'll just drag this down a bit. So what I can do right now is to begin to make changes to this. So with the node tool selected, I can begin to drag out curves on this fabric and see this is how this edge is going to look like. I can just drag this edge here to increase or decrease this. I can even drag this Bezier handle. And what I can do is to start working on this and just pulling this around and just kind of like moving these points and making them like so. We can even set the opacity here to lower the opacity so we can see through the model at the bottom. And what we can do right now is to duplicate this so I'll just go over here and say control J to dupl duplicate this. I'll select the one at the bottom and I'll go back to the move tool and flip this, hold down shift and let's drag this towards the right. Now we can see we have a basic uh, pattern design. Let's say we want to create the blouse. What we can do is to go over to our pen tool or we can use any uh, polygonal shape. Let's use the rectangle tool this time around and just create a nice rectangle shape right here. Let's say this is a nice skirt. I'll click on the move tool and move this. Now you can notice this is kind of like beneath our, uh, our, our sketch. So what we can do is to just drag this up and set this above and let's set the opacity to at least uh, something transparent we can set this to. So now we have this, let's go ahead and change this. So first let's click on convert to curves because we used a basic tool and let's go to the node tool. So with each edge we select, we can just drag this over here, drag this over here. And then what we can do is just make this slightly kind of like curvy, go over this edge and make this kind of curvy as well. So you can see we have a basic flat uh, design for this. If we want to make changes like to create a variation for the shirt or the skirt, all we need to do is to click on the skirt, press Ctrl J to duplicate the skirt. We can select this. We can hold on shift and just drag this to the right like so. We can also select our shape, our base shape and press Ctrl J to drag that also. And then we'll hold on shift and then drag this over here so we can see our basic model with the shape like so. All right, so we can actually see that model we can uh, begin to group things to make them more organized, but you get the idea. So if I click on this skirt now, I can just drag this down a little bit and just kind of like make this slightly wide just to show me how this uh, skirt is gonna be looking on this. And what I can do is to click this uh, shirt, click the other one and press Ctrl G just to group the shirt. So I'll just call that the top and press enter. And what I can do is press Ctrl J to duplicate that top and I'll click the one at the bottom, hold down shift and just drag this and place this 
over our uh, mannequin sketch like so. We can just zoom in and see what we're working with. So here, I'll just uh, hold on control and zoom out and just uh, freely drag this around just to see this design. And you can start doing things like changing the color. And let's go ahead and set our opacity back to a large value. And then we can start doing things like changing the color. So let's say I want this uh, kind of like blue tone, cool tone. So with this selected, if I want to change this color to this value, all I need to do is to click on the eyedropper tool and click on the skirt and the shirt is also going to change. So basically uh, that's a very uh, quick way to recreate patterns and designs. And let's say for instance, you want the neck of this pattern to be different. You just click on the curve tool, click on the node tool, and then we can just zoom in. Remember we can zoom in and out by clicking on the navigator and we can start doing things like, you know, making this uh, neck a bit straight like so. We can do the same thing for this one. Or if you want it to be perfectly symmetrical, you walk with one side and then you copy and flip this design. So, uh, and how do you add holes to this? Let's say, for instance, you want to create more kind of like lines. So creating lines is straightforward. We can use the, uh, we can use the freehand vector brush tool, or we can even use the pen tool. Let's create a nice little line and let's create another line. Let's zoom in and create another line here. Oops. So to finish that line, hold control and click anywhere. You're true with that line. Let's click here and draw another line. So we have another line. Let's control click on that line and we can go back to this curve, switch to the node tool and kind of like make this line curvy or click the edge and begin to expand this so we can add more detail to these lines. Now remember this is going to be seating underneath. So to see that, let's drag this to the top. So we're working with our top. So basically that's a very uh, quick way to you know bring in your sketches. We began by bringing in our mannequin. Let's just deselect every layer. We started in by bringing in our sketch of our eight head model. Let's make this highly opac uh, increase the opacity. And we actually began to you know create our sketches. Say for instance, we wanted to like sketch out the pants. We can start with the pen tool and create very hard polygonal shapes like so. Very simple shapes, nothing too complex. So now we're done with that. What I can do is now go to the move tool, select this shape. So I'll just click on this shape. We actually see this. We can rename this by double clicking. Let's call this our pants. And what we can do right now is to kind of like use go over the node tool. So let me go ahead and set the reduce the opacity now. Just drag the opacity down a little bit. And so let's go back to our node tool. So this is our node tool. And let's go over here and just drag this, uh, select this shape and just drag this slightly out a bit to make this slightly curvy. Let's push this in and let's push this in as well. Select this edge. If you click on it, you're going to add a point, right? So we can add two points. So we don't want to do that. So I'll press Ctrl Z to undo. What I want to do is just hover my mouse over it and then click this edge. And then over here, we can just drag this down. Now we don't have a fill to create a fill. Let's go to the fill, click any value or color we want. Let's try this. And that's going to be our fill. So that's how we can create, you know, variations for our designs and whatnot. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions and uh, want to understand how we actually uh, did this and built this, you can just send in any questions and you can just uh, you know, kind of like tell me what you want to see. So like I said, if we want to make our uh, mannequins super uh, smooth, so what we need to do is to select it. So over here on this shape, I'll just select this shape. And what I can start doing now is to make this smooth. Now, for instance, this point is very uh, harsh or very hard. I'll just make this smooth by clicking on the point and clicking on the convert to smooth. Now I can see we have a Bezier handle that we can change and smoothen out this curve. So we can click on this handle and just drag it a bit just to give it that more organic vibe. We can go to the shape and left click and just hold and just push this up a little bit. And over here, we can just drag this a little bit to make it uh, thinner or smaller. So basically this will deviate from this angular shapes we have right here. 
But once again, thank you very much for watching this quick short tutorial. Hope you've learned a little bit about Affinity Designer and how you can use that to bring in your images and then start tracing and creating patterns that you can use for drafting. We are going to start from a very basic step by step and I'll be creating more tutorials and showing you how you can draft your designs. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.